we are jumping back into our Knicks rebuild. Now, currently you can see we are four and eight on the season. To me, that is just not good enough. Now, I was looking for a player that can get us 20 points per game because this is kind of embarrassing, but if you go to our player stats, you can take a look and see that Ricky Rubio is actually leading us in scoring. That's not good, okay? Ricky Rubio has never been a leading scorer on any team he's played on, so the fact that he is leading us in scoring is a very bad look. So there's two offers that I really like. There's one from the Denver Nuggets for Michael Porter Jr. and De'Aaron Fox. Now we would have to trade away our first round pick going into next season and I'm okay with doing that because I think this team is going to end up being pretty decent and I think we still might make the playoffs so it's not going to be worth as much as we think. So I'm going to actually end up making the trade for Michael Porter Jr. The reason being is because his potential is really incredible. Think of him as like a KD type player. He can really come in and get some buckets. Tall, lanky player, 6'10", got a smooth jumper, incredible finishing ability. This is the trade that we need to make. Uh, again, we'll be, giving our, we'll be giving away our first round pick, but like I said, it, it's, it doesn't carry too much weight as much as we think. We might as well make this trade while it's still pretty high value. So Michael Porter Jr., welcome to the New York Knicks. Now we're going to be making a couple more moves. The first one we're going to be making is sending away Kelly Obrey Jr. We no longer need him since we got Michael Porter Jr. We're going to move him and Alfred Payton for Devontae Graham and Bismack Biombo. Now Biombo will very likely be on his way out as well. Now I'm going to be packaging Biombo and our first round pick in 2023. This actually belongs to the Mavericks and is top 10 protected for Bielitsa and Bogdanovich. Two guys that are going to come to this team and add more depth to this team. I actually think Bielitsa is going to be starting at our power forward because Bobby Portis is currently there. Now, I know Bielitsa is a little bit older, but he's going to be running that pick and pop uh, with our point guard, so it's going to work out perfectly. I think his three-point rating is pretty high. Let me take a quick look at his badges. He got some shooting badges as well, so uh, he's going to come in and extend the court out there. Bogdanovich, a young, semi-young shooting guard. Both of these guys may end up just leaving next season, but for now, it'll add the depth that we need. So we have made a ton of trades, and this is currently how our team is looking. Ricky Rubio, RJ Barrett, Michael Porter Jr., remember, is entering that starting lineup. Uh, Bobby Porter and Mitchell Robinson. Then we got Devontae Graham coming off the bench, backed up by Bielitsa, Bogdanovich, Cody Zeller, the backup center, and don't forget, we still got Anunobi as well. So this team is looking good. Like, considering what we started with, we have made quite a bit of progress. All right, so uh, you guys remember when I said that this team was uh, likely going to go to the playoffs and not need that pick? Well, you know what? We will probably need that pick. Currently, we're 11 and 26, so pretty bad, uh, which surprises me because it looks like this team that we've put together is pretty decent. Now, I think this team is going to require a little seasoning, okay? I think we need a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and I think we need a year for these guys to develop because we got a lot of young players. They're pretty good, but right now this team is literally just based on potential, right? We want to see RJ Barrett turn into something good. We want to see Michael Porter Jr. turn into something good as well. And Devontae Graham, still a young point guard who's currently leading us in scoring, which is good to see. Uh, but, you know, I guess we're not as good as I thought we were just yet. Like I said, this team is going to need a little bit of seasoning. Maybe next year they're going to be even better. But I don't want to go ahead and stimulate this whole season out just yet. I'm going to play one more game. We're going to simulate up to the uh, all-star draft. We'll see how it looks, and then we'll go from there. We might end up just uh, simulating out this whole season so we can actually be competitive. But 11 and 26 is much worse than I thought. Now let's jump into a game. Let's see what Michael Porter Jr. is capable of. Let's see what this team is capable of, and we'll go from there. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that sub button. Hit that bell notification as well so you can stay up to date with this series and all the other ones we got going on. All right, we are playing the Utah Jazz on their alternate court with their alternate uniforms. It looks pretty nice, I must say. So we're in this game for one reason. We want to see what Michael Porter Jr. is capable of, right? He was our newest trade, and he is coming in and already getting his first two. But no, for real. Uh, we, need to, we need to see what this team is capable of developing into. We got a lot of young talent, a lot of young pieces, and if they don't develop the way I'm expecting them to, we might be in trouble for many years to come. However, if they do, oh, Mitchell Robinson. But as I was saying, if they do end up developing the way I want them to, we are going to have a team, a dynasty for many years to come. As the shot clock is winding down, Mitchell has to throw up a midi. He's going to miss that one. Go bear on the rebound. He wants to fade away hook shot. Getting creative out there. 
Let's go. Let's push the space. I see RJ Barrett already leaking out there. He's going to find his way going all the way to the rim with a big one-hander. Oh, give me that. Ricky Rubio is a thief. He is a thief. MPJ, pull-up jumper like that in transition. Let's go. Quick five points for MPJ. Ten seconds left on the shot clock for the Jazz. Rudy Gobert has the ball in his hand. Looking very aggressive with it. Okay. Rubio attack. Dump off to... Oh, Mitchell Robinson. Big time one-hander. Mike Conley for the Utah Jazz has underperformed so much. I, like, the Jazz fans were so excited to get him, but he has definitely not lived up to that contract that he signed a couple of years back. I see MPJ deep in that corner, wide open. Let's see the green release. This man has seven points already. We are jumping back into this one, and we got three minutes left to go. We are up 25 to 8. This is what I want to see. This is how the team should be performing. And the best part about our bench is, is that we're getting players that come in and get buckets, right? Before, our bench was, like, pretty empty scoring-wise, but we got three guys out there that can actually put the ball in the bucket. Bielitsa is clearly not one of them. Devontae says, give me that. Give me that. I'm going to pull up this three ball, too. I believe in this jumper. I believe in the green release. So we are jumping back into this one in the second quarter, and we are up by 14 points. Now, does that mean we are going to win this game? Absolutely not. We are playing on 2K. We are playing on Hall of Fame difficulty. There is no way this game is going to be that easy. Sometimes it is, but most of the times it is not. As what? Mike Conley, what are you thinking? What, what, what was he trying to do there? RJ Barrett, let's see this three ball. Let's see it. Oh, come on. You're the only one that hasn't hit a three yet. Let's see how this play develops. We're going to go to MPJ here. Over to Bobby Portis. Inside to Mitch Robinson. Is this a play for him? Interesting. I don't have that much faith in him, but look at MPJ in the corner, putting up that jumper and knocking it down. Under five minutes to go here. Mike Conley bringing this one up, and okay, that was probably the worst defensive possession I've ever seen. Mike Conley or uh, Mitchell Robinson swinging this one over to Ricky Rubio. It's going to be a screen for Barry. He's going to come off that midi pull up. Misses. So as expected, they get it down to a 10-point game. Is anybody surprised? I know I'm not. MPJ, a little post-up action here. He's going to go to the rim. Tough finish. And one bucket. Let's go. Give me that. I'll take that. Hey, if you're going to dribble in front of me, I'm going to steal it 10 times out of 10. No way. Stop it, Rudy. That went in. I don't, I don't even know. RJ Barrett already leaking and creeping. Going all the way. And one bucket. My two young guns are getting it done. Got our bench back in the game. Devontae Graham leading the way here. Gonna try to take it all the way. I'm gonna up fake in here. Kick it out to Bielitsa. Big time three ball. Oh, he misses. Whoa! Bradley with the and one. Okay. Okay, we gotta be careful, man. As Bogdanovich, because he's gonna get a good look here. Knock it down. Let's go, Bogdanovich. Devontae Graham got the quickest handles. Let's just send him all the way to the rim. Why not? Why not? Man, 2K gives you the animation. You're gonna make a layup. So we are jumping back into this one in the third quarter. About seven minutes left to go. And this game is looking like a wrap already. We are up by 22 points. The Jazz completely underperforming. You would think they would put up a better fight as Mike Conley takes it all the way. Can't really say much for the Jazz, man. They've definitely not lived up to that hype. At least on 2K. They're good in real life. Don't get me wrong. Let's see what's happening here. What play are we setting up? He's going to go to Barrett. Right back to Rubio. That play literally never works. I think I'm just running it incorrectly. Going to go deep in the other corner to MPJ. We're going to take a screen quickly. Oh, we're going to have to put up a fadeaway here. Oh, look at Robinson. Big time rebound. I think Ricky Rubio is the perfect point guard for this team as he comes up with another steal. Wow. But for real, I think he is the perfect point guard as MPJ takes it all the way. And the reason I say that is because we got two scorers that heavily depend on him getting the ball to them. He already has nine assists, and MPJ and RJ Barrett are going to make a living off of those passes. So, oh, look at this. He got his takeover. Stop it. Okay, you didn't actually have to stop it. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Stop it. Okay, you know what? Fine. Okay, so we are jumping into this one. Fast forwarding to the fourth quarter. As we can see, the blowout still is in effect. This game was really not even close starting out in that first quarter. We kind of ran away with this one as Bradley working the glass. But, you know, we just played some good basketball. I wish we would play like that when we actually simulate the games. That would be nice. Um, but clearly not working out that way. As Devontae Graham working off that screen. Going to get a nice little midi. He'll miss that. 
Under four minutes to go here as Bogdanovich is going to green light a three. This is what I'm talking about, man. In 2K, you always got to be careful. All of a sudden, they're only down by 16. They still have four minutes left to go, so really anything can happen and probably will happen if we don't take control of this. RJ Barrett in the post trying to use his size on Mitchell. The up fake is not taking us anywhere. We're going to swing this one over to MPJ. He's going to get a pretty decent look at this three ball and miss. Got to lock up on this possession. They got mismatches all over the place. Mike Conley Jr. If he goes up with this, he's lost his mind. Of course he gets the foul call. Rubio with 12 assists in this game. I'm telling you, man. RJ Barrett coming off that screen. Let's go. MPJ guarding up on his man. Shot clock winding down. Tough shot coming in from the... Whoa. Got to grab those Portis. Hey, Portis has 17 and 7. I didn't even realize that. He has had a pretty decent game as well. But he's going to be on the trading block pretty soon. Not going to lie. What a tough take. Let's get one more bucket and then we'll call GG's on this one. Rubio got his uh, playmaker. Playmaking takeover right now. And MPJ wide open for three. Misses. Okay, interesting situation here. The Jazz have a chance to cut into this lead even further. If Mitchell hits that, that's a problem. Thankfully, he misses that. If we get a bucket here, it's GG. So let's go ahead and uh, let's make it happen. RJ, just go to the rim, baby. Let's go. Big take. What? How did he miss that? Even if it was late, he, uh, what? he was right at the rim. Stop it, Mitchell. That's not going in. RJ, take us home. Kick it out. MPJ. The jumper is up and in, and with that, we call GG. So we walk away with a nice little victory in this one. 118-105. to 105. The Utah Jazz were trailing, and we controlled this game from the get-go. Nice little victory here. Good to see what MPJ is capable of. I'm very excited to see what this team is going to be able to do one year from now. Taking a look at this box score, Bobby Portis somehow led us in scoring with 21 and 9. 9 of 11 from the field. Okay. MPJ with 23 and 3, 9 of 20, 1 of 7 from 3. That's not too good. We Actually, that's not good at all, obviously, but we need that to improve quite a bit. RJ Barrett, 13 and 5. Mitch Robinson, 13 and 10. Bogdanovich off the bench with 13 and 3. And Bielitsa with 12. But the one thing I like is Rubio with 13 assists. Like I said, that's that playmaker we need on this team. So let's go ahead and simulate up to the All-Star Draft and let's see what happens. And once we figure that out, we'll go from there and uh, we might go ahead and simulate simulate out this whole season. So we have a pretty interesting team on our hands. Reason being is because we went on a big winning streak here. Uh, we were looking good for a little while and then we started going on a nice little losing streak out of nowhere. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and simulate, simulate out this season in the next episode. If we take a look at the league standings, does it look like we have any hope? Um, it looks like we have a little bit of hope. Uh, but we'll see what we do going forward. I might play one or two more games. Who knows? Uh, maybe if we string together another winning streak with a chance at the eighth seed, we'll see. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new here, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.